Hey Hitesh, can I become a web developer if I don't have a degree in computer science? Hey Hitesh, can I become a data science engineer, machine learning engineer, insert your favorite latest modern tech here, a generative AI, HFT engineer without a degree? Yes, of course you can. If you just came here to know only this much, you got your answer, now you can go ahead and start preparing. This is a raw video. I usually make a lot of raw videos, not a lot, but I have one or two in a, in a month. And this raw videos are not being edited out. I just post them as it is. Sometimes I rant in them. But these are my inner thoughts, which a lot of people love, not all. This video is not intended for all the people, only selected few individuals and intellectuals who like to know and understand these raw thoughts. Uh, so this is exactly video for that. So now that you understand the context of video, let me, let me share some of the thoughts more on this phenomena that is going on in the round. And this is very interesting thing to see around and witness this all around. So a lot of people are focused on that, I don't have degree, but I still want to enter in the world of tech. Can I do this? And yes, I genuinely believe that yes, you can enter. There is no such hard requirement of the degree. And you can become a web developer, a data scientist, generative AI engineer, or whatever the modern tech stack, or web three engineer, whatever that is going on. Yes, you can. And I have 100% belief in that system. Also, what I'm noticing is a lot of people who are pursuing the degrees, they also have a mindset that this degree is a stopping me from learning all the latest, uh, the tech stack that I can learn probably. And usually the answers are, I want to learn React, which is not in my curriculum. I want to learn Next.js, which is not in my curriculum. And a lot of such things comes around. And usually the point of heat is that, why am I learning physics? Why am I learning chemistry? why I'm learning this mathematics and I should be learning more of the real engineering. And my thoughts are a little different on this side. So what I usually, my thinking process is that, yes, of course we do agree that it's long due that the curriculum wasn't updated, but it's not gonna be updated the way you like it. It's never going to be updated like, hey, now we are teaching in our curriculum, next year, or React or something like that. And that should never happen. That is the worst thing that can happen to engineering. Already a lot of bad things has happened to engineering. Not because the institutes, yes, of course, they have their lot of wrong participation in that, but there's a lot of wrong participation from the student side as well. Now that there are a lot of uh, admission time that is going on, you'll see that a lot of YouTube channels are doing what they shouldn't be doing. They are just uh, praising the colleges or praising them up, praising the, or just, uh, kind of a nailing them down. The real focus should be on the engineering. The engineering side is something that you need to understand. It's not the degree that makes you engineer. That four-year course is just a shortcut to prepare your brain in such a way that now your brain becomes an engineering brain and you start thinking from an engineering perspective. That's the whole idea of this four-year degree that a lot of us are pursuing. It's not about that, hey, if I'll get into this college, I'll become an engineer, then I'll go. This, this, this is how it doesn't work. The very first engineering college and very first degrees that were introduced was to just uh, have a framework in which we can put some students and sharpen their brain and make them engineering. And this is exactly where we are, we are losing our focus on making anybody engineer. And that is what is bothering uh, every single time to me. So I think we need to change our mindset uh, from an, to an engineering mindset, from being just pursuing a degree to an engineering mindset. And how to do this? This is really difficult to explain that how we can make that. Let me give you a couple of examples here. Your, a lot of people's focus is on learning programming language. And on top of that, there are a few YouTube channels which people, a lot of people watch in their engineering first year days or probably a little bit in the uh, third sem days. But after that, they eventually go into the original engineering channels. And what you understand is there's a lot of focus on just the programming language and just learn the DSA because that sells and there's nothing wrong in that. Where the focus should be on the engineering side of it. And engineering is not just the programming language or the data structure. These are just tools. Like for example, yes, you are excited to learn the piano, how to play the piano, but that's the step one. You should be more excited about that. Now can I use my brain and produce melodies which are amazing with that piano? Similarly, the focus initially should be on programming languages, the learning path of it, the roadmaps, of course, of it, then the data structure probably, but not entirely on that. It should be moving the focus on that, how can I now produce good products out of it? 
and what is more things that I'm going to learn. Let me give you a scenario which a lot of people don't talk, talk about it. In the last five years, a lot of real engineering focus is on how can we use or how can our programming languages use the multi-threadings, the CPUs. We have so many cores in our programming language. And you'll be surprised to know that a lot of people are actually working with just basic Node.js and are utilizing multiple cores of the CPU. Yes, it's, it's possible. But you are just focused on so much in narrowing your mindset and learning just the Node.js, just the REST API, just the JavaScript or the data structure that you are not thinking outside of it. There's so much engineering that goes in the operating system, in the networking, in building the project and scaling the project. There's so much more. So my recommendation is at least go ahead and find these channels which talks about the real engineering side of it. And this reminds me, yes, uh, I was thinking to make a couple of videos on the engineering side of the databases, how they are being stored in the operating system and all of that and a little bit on the engineering side of the Node.js and multi-cluster. So if you want that, let me know in the comments section. But moving again, moving again on the rant of the why the people mindset is too much focused on just a few selected courses. We really need to upgrade all the YouTubers who are talking just about these basics. Once in a while, I'm not saying always do that because I know that can kill your channel. But once in a while, we can come forward without worrying about the views and the audience and all of that. And let's talk about the real engineering side of it. At least just introduce the people. Instead of putting too many roadmaps about the next JS or React, let's just show them how to build one project. Basic to do. That's nothing. Basic crud. That is much more fruitful than keep on talking about the roadmaps and roadmaps. I think we are done with the roadmap. But since they produce a lot of views, guilty as charged, I'll probably do that as well. But it is a little bit on the audience side as well. I don't usually blame the audience. It's a little bit on the audience side that, hey, demand these things which are a little bit more advanced. And when you'll be demanding these things, obviously they have to fulfill this. So this is how the things are. Let me give you five of the steps which I always keep in mind when I'm talking about the engineering side of the things. The very first thing which I always talk about is the problem solving approach and the tools approach. Everything that you see around are just tools. You should not be defending React Native or the Flutter or React Native or Minion.js, Next.js. No, they, these are tools. Just understand the inner engineering of how these are being done and then figure out which is the best tool that I can pick up to solve this job. Don't think DSA as that, hey, I'll learn the DSA, I'll get the job and that's it. That's not an engineering mindset. That's again a mugging mindset. All the things that you are hating about the chemistry because you have to wrote that, you have to just remember that. Yes, you are doing exactly the same with the data structures and algorithm. Instead of using them as a tool to make your application more optimized, you don't even have an application. So uh, even a web or mobile, you don't have anything at all. So where you are, why are you so much aggressive towards learning data structure? Where is the first use case you found that this is where my application is choking, now I need to learn the data structure. So first, brush up more your problem solving approach how can I solve a problem? I have even met people whose problem solving skill is just I can solve lead code. Do you think that the problem solving is just lead code? <laughs> this, this is funny, man. This is now how it should be. So step one is improve your problem solving approach. The step two is learn from the perspective of system thinking. And no, I'm not saying that to go buy a system design course. If you wish, you go ahead. <laughs> Nothing bothers me there. But understand more about the systems thinking and try to understand it from a perspective of a non-software person. If you would be building a bridge, you would be thinking from a system thinking as well. You would be learning about how bricks works, how, how the cement works, and all these internal details about it. And similarly, when you build a software, you need to think about the systems as well. Where will I host it? What role is operating system going to work in that? How can I store my data better in the memory? How can I access the memory better? Uh, is there going to be a network call? Will I be flooding my network calls? What amount of data is going to come up that? Can I gzip that data? Can I extract that data? How much time users have to wait? These are all system thinking. These are not just any system designer course. And yes, these courses, these books helps you a lot at thinking from the system design perspective but you need to think with a bigger picture from the engineering mindset that how my system will work, how my system will behave. The third point is the continuous learning and development. I see a lot of things on my channel that, hey, I'm learning React because it's a foolproof technology and for the next five years, I'm happy and I'm sure that React will not go anyway. If React doesn't go away in the next five years, I would be very frustrated. 
I'm a big advocate of React, but I think there is a need of constant improvement, constant learning, and thank goodness, the real engineering is in the hand of real engineers who are building these frameworks, libraries, and all of that. Things need to go away. Nothing should be so much stable that nobody's touching that in the next five years. Things should go away. One of the best thing about the software development is its rapid development. And you have to always and always keep on learning. There is no stoppage of it. If you're afraid of it, leave engineering right now. Leave software engineering right now. You have to learn throughout the year. You have to learn throughout the year. There is no stoppage of it until unless you go into the managerial role. If you enjoy the engineering part of it, if you enjoy even the teaching part of this, you have to learn. Constantly new frameworks will drop. Each one will be better than the last one a little bit. And down the line, three years or four years, the things will be completely swapped up and new things will take place. It's a part of continuous learning. Nobody can stop you from doing that. So in case you are thinking, I'm learning this Java because it will be stable for the next five years, or I'm learning JavaScript because it will be stable for the next five years, or which tech should I learn, which will be stable for the next five years? No, man, you're not learning engineering. You are just trying to memorize the things. Just like IIT JE, I want to memorize the things, solve that question and get into the admission. It doesn't work that way. So this thing of continuous learning and improvement, you like it or not, it's very forceful, but it will happen. Another thing is the point number four, which I usually say is get your things into attention to details. Attention or details is the most crucial thing for every single engineer. Every single thing, uh, if you take it from the perspective of software engineering or from civil engineering, mechanical engineering, everything is attention to detail. Giving you an example, in the mechanical engineer, have you seen any bike? Have you noticed how the stand of these bikes are being placed? They are placed in such a way that if somebody accidentally drives it, it doesn't make him fall. It automatically goes to the back side of it, not to the front side of it. This is detail. This is attention to the minute details that you're having. And eh, engineering is all about that. So when you're building the software, these attention to details is something really nice. And you will only get these attention to detail when you're building something on your own. That might be just a new thread clone or maybe a Twitter clone, but just a UI clone or just just taking these some of the basic things and applying them, go ahead, do something more substantial, and then automatically you'll be getting uh, these attention to detail. So go ahead and uh, learn more about its accuracy, its precision, its readability, what this will do, how much time it will take, will I give a loader to the user, can I make my spinner faster to get an illusion? This is all engineering. It's not a job of front end, it's not a job of back end, it's the job of engineer to understand these minute details about it. And last but not the least is the collaboration and teamwork. I know and I totally understand, I relate to you that I'm also an introvert. I talk a lot on camera, but in the real world, I honestly don't like to meet too many of the people. I don't really like to interact with that, but I know that I have this responsibility that I can talk well, so I should be inspiring more people to do engineering and real stuff, but I understand you that being an introvert, it's not easy to collaborate and teamwork. I learned that while reading a lot of books and it helped me a lot to understand the human psychology, at least interact that much, which is required for the team. And no good product is being designed and developed with just one person. You, you cannot, and especially in the modern time, you cannot. You need to collaborate with designers and the front end engineers, the back end and the managers. They are all part of your family now. Maybe the designers, you don't want to talk to them. Maybe the testers, you don't like them, you hate them. But that's how the product is being built. And that's why I recommend that there are a lot of hackathons that are uh, that are being conducted by a variety of organizations. Uh, there are a lot of fest that goes on. In those fests, there are a lot of things goes on. So take your team and interact with them and try to have a collaborative mindset. Uh, focus a little bit on the teamwork. Everything, you can learn everything. Just like you have learned programming, you can learn teamwork as well. You can learn collaboration as well. There are good books on it. The reels are not going to talk and will say all of this to you. You need to get out from the reels and the worlds of one minute videos and these five minute videos. I know nobody's watching till this point uh, because this is a long format video. But if you're watching great news, you can read a book too as well. There are a lot of good books on the team management, teamwork, understanding people. If you wish, I can make a video on that. Although nobody's going to watch it, but I'll still make it because I love this. This YouTube entire thing is a hobby for me. This is a way how I can put out my feelings and my thoughts into the world. Maybe world will like it, maybe not, but I I'll still do it. That is how YouTube should be. It should not be a game of winning the subscriber, winning the views, getting the most viewed channel. 
there is no point of it if you're not enjoying it. The YouTube is a different thing and this is how it should be. So yeah, I don't know what I say. There's, there were a lot of thoughts in my mind these days. I just came forward and just put it out. Yeah, because I saw a lot of YouTube channel. A lot of things are happening in my college as well. I even saw what people are asking when they go into the college. They're not asking for curriculum. They're asking just for the package. So college is exactly delivering them. If you ask for a package, here's the package. Here's the job guarantee. If you would have asked me what professors are teaching, what curriculum is there, what additional activities are there, we would have focused on that. So there's a lot of thoughts in my mind, but I think I've rented too much. Yeah, we should stop it here. All right, so for those only five or 10 people who are watching this, thank you so much for watching. And let's get back and I'll upload another Next.js video very soon. Let's catch up there.